property. TCP is such a common protocol. We use it all the time when we browse the web using HTTP or when we send an email using SMTP. Copy file to a remote server using FTP and even behind the scenes when a DNS zone transfers occur. We take advantages of TCP's benefits such as reliability, flow control, and stateful connectivity all the time. These defaults, these features make use of the field inside the TCP header to establish a connection using sync and ACBIS. TCP gracefully close a session using Finbit and it is 16-bit window size helps control congestion. TCP connectivity starts with the three-way handshake and each segment, segment is sequenced and acknowledged during the session to ensure that we don't lose any data along the way. If so, we simply resend what hasn't been acknowledged. But the working of TCP are also target for attack. This attack is very in purpose and functionality. Let's look at three vulnerability. One, the TCP send flood. Two, TCP session hijacking. And three, TCP reset attack. In the TCP send flood attack, there are three approaches that an attacker can take. There is a the direct attack, there is a spoofing based attack, and there is a distributed attack. In our example, we can assume that our server is running HTTP and so there is a daemon running and it is listening on TCP port 80 for HTTP request. When our host wants to view the web page being served, it sends a TCP connect message first. We perform the three-way handshake and once established, the server can go ahead and deliver that content back to the end user. When the three-way handshake does not complete, complete, this connection is considered half open. The server has to allocate resources to maintain and track the state of the connection. And this data structure is finite size. In a direct attack, the source host uses its real IP address and it sends a high number of connect message to the server in an attempt to consume resources. But what's to stop uh, the host from completing the handshake? Well, a firewall can be placed in the path to block the responses that are coming back from the host because of what's involved in making this happen. The direct attack is not the most common type of attack. Now in our attack, our host becomes an attacker by sending a high number of TCP send messages to our server using a spoofed address. The spoof address is either a, a non-existence address or an address that will be unreachable from the server. So when the server replies back, it goes off into nowhere and that allocated memory is consumed and unusable. If enough of these requests are made, then eventually the server runs out of memory resources and can't serve its real host. Initiating network from a legitimate source address is a quick way to be located and shut down. And that is why spoofing is so common. So direct attack, not really a particular method for attackers. Today it is more common to have either a spoof attack or even a distributed attack. Among multiple devices that can be controlled by a single attacker. This is a scenario known as a botnet or a dried army. In this case, what happened is a attacker has a control of multiple devices and are that are infected with some type of software malware that give access to this command and control devices. This device can then go ahead and send a instruction telling all of these devices to send TCP send messages at the same time to the machine and can either spoof again a non-existence address so that the server never hear back or again a firewall could be in place 
in between so that their responses are never allowed to come back from the actual host addresses. But again, it is more common that you are going to see spoof address that are non-existent. In any case, all three of these examples, the direct attack, the spoofing base attack and the distributed attack are designed to consume each block of memory on that server. All of the server resources so that it is not able to serve real request. Well, another type of attack that we uh, see is called a C TCP session hijacking attack. Now you might recall that in a three-way handshake, we have something called an initial sequence number, an ISN. And in this Wireshark output, we can see the SEN, SEN ACK and ACK all taking place. And the initial sequence number that ISN is set to a value of zero. So our client who is establishing a connection to the server set that, sets that value to zero and the act that is going to come back from the server is going to be the ISN plus one. So the act that comes back is going to be a value of one. Now to complete that three-way handshake, this client need to send an act back. And the sequence number at this point is going to be a value of one. And so this is how the sequence numbering works. Now in a TCP session hijacking attack, the goal of attacker is to get the ISN and then act the last TCP segment of the three-way handshake. Now this is known as a blind TCP spoofing attack because of the attacker has to guess what the ISN is. In other words, the attacker doesn't see the packet as they cross the network. Here is not connected. He is not connected. He is not in the path. He is not able to see those packets. If he were able to see those packets, meaning that attacker is somewhere sitting on the network and he has perhaps Wireshark, Wireshark open and he is able to capture packets. Well, in that case, TCP session hijacking would be the non-blind type of TCP session hijacking. He doesn't need to guess because he can see the traffic that is there. Well, this is just another example of what can happen on a network. Now, some common tools that are used for session hijacking. hijacking. We have Juggernaut, we have Hunt, we have TTY Watcher, and we have T-Site. Some of these tools you will find made available to you in Linux distribution like Kali Linux, which is of course common for penetration testing, but it's definitely something that we want to be aware of. Now our final TCP attack is the TCP reset attack. Now assuming that two TCP hosts are talking each other, an attacker can disrupt communication by sending a TCP reset to either party in the session. This attacker mainly disrupt communication between two endpoints. But let, let's look at how standard TCP connection should close. So what we uh, so what we see there is a host who is talking to a server and the host has just received some data and how the host is finished with the connection. So he is going to send a TCP segment. And in the flags portion of the header, he is going to toggle the fin bit. Now, when the server receives that, it is an indication to the, to the server that the connection is finished. The server will send two messages back and act as well as his own fin. And that fin needs to be acted by the client. In this case, it indicates that session is now closed and we have done it in a clean fashion. Now there is another way to close the TCP session and that is using the reset bit what we find in the TCP header. Now normally at values, th that value is zero. We don't do a reset if we see a value of zero. And so everything operates normally. But if we toggle that bit, it indicates that session is closed. So here we can see an example of that client again, sending a send message to the server. Only in this case, the server is sending back a reset. 
Now the client doesn't really know what is going on in this case. So he says, wait a second, let me retry that. I need to send the send message. I need to establish a three-way handshake with you. And another reset is sent back. Again, we retry again and another reset is sent back. What is happening here? Well, oftentimes this is something that we see but the port is closed. So in other words, if we were trying to make a connection on TCP port 80, but that server is not listening on TCP port 80, it will get a reset coming back saying, hey, reset that connection. I'm not listening on that port. But you see, if an attacker take, takes advantage of this method, method, then he could spoof the server and send reset messages back, making it possible for a client to establish a three-way handshake and thus talk to anybody. So this is a technique that we use in our IPS devices to determine unwanted session. But when it is used by an attacker, it has the potential to cripple network communication. So as a security analyst, we need to be able to spot this activity when we are auditing our network activity. Please subscribe our uh, channel for more interesting tutorials and video for learning and see below in the description details about uh, TCP attacks. Thank you so much.